Hi, you're watching a very special recording of Agenda Awani. I'm not in the studio. I'm here, a secret location, <laughs> at a very important house because it's the home of uh, the top, you know, representative of Finland to Malaysia. And uh, because of that, I get to meet great people from Finland who are here. And one great expert from Finland who's here, he is the best person for me to ask about the Finnish education system and that is Mr. Oli Pekka Ainonen. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you. You, I think, ha have been two portfolios of minister capacity before, mm -hmm. uh, in the ministerial capacity, but now you're the director general at the Finnish National Agency for Education. Yes. So I just want to concentrate on education for our short discussion. So I'm going to start with with any rankings about quality of life, mm -hmm. you will see the Scandinavian countries being on top, in the top five. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at education, which is more and more important for talent going forward, mm -hmm. you also see the Scandinavian countries right on top. I don't think it's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Education needs to exist within an ecosystem. Sure. So I'm just going to go straight to get your wisdom on it. While you were the minister, and now you're looking at specifically at the National Agency for Education, mm -hmm. what is it about the Finnish education system? Because when I look at the Americans comparing Finnish education to American system, mm -hmm. they acknowledge hands down mm -hmm. that you guys are up there. Mm -hmm. The basic things like instead of putting them through rote learning, mm -hmm. you make young students even at preschool level, mm. you know, the art of problem solving. Mm. It's not an individual 1800s industrial revolution kind of factory, mm. but instead it is a community mm. working with one another to get knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I remember one conference I went to where, why do we have a four square walls classroom 30 to 40 students and one person talking in front. Mm. That's not how human being think yeah. and work. Sure. So I'm going to lay out all that for you to yes. please uh, tell us the Finnish education system and the secrets behind it. I would say that there are kind of two main components that are very important. The first one is the equity that, that we see it so important that the education system um, gives equal opportunities and takes care of every child's potential. And that also includes the idea that kind of things like talent or creativeness, they are not something that you are born with or you are not born with, but they are things that everybody can learn. So it's a very strong kind of growth mindset in kind of taking care of the inclusive education. Mm -hmm. The second important issue is trust in the system. And trust kind of goes through the whole system, meaning that on the national level we set very general targets for learning. But then the municipalities on the local level, the schools and the teachers they have a lot of autonomy on deciding that how they are going to reach those targets. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of an issue that we don't have any, no national inspection, no kind of on, on, on basic education, no national tests no kind of decisions what materials or textbooks should be used but we are trusting our teachers and actually that trust goes all the way to the pupils because okay. we want the pupils to be active learners that they that the grow that they can have the kind of growing responsibility of their own progress and the kind of the building of an inner motivation to develop yourself. So that's the kind of final aim that we are aiming at. Right. Sometimes it looks good at policy level, on paper. Yeah. But I think uh, Finland has managed to 
practice it and maybe mm. equality and trust mm. empowers the grassroots to do it yeah. but at the end of the day the high arching concept is mm -hmm. in this part of the world sometimes mm -hmm. you have to force the children to go to school they mm. hate going mm. to school they mm. cry when we want mm. them to go to school mm. they look at their mothers and they refuse to release the hand of the mother mm -hmm. but when i'm mm -hmm. googling and i'm studying and asking people mm. about the finnish education system mm -hmm. hey you go to mm. the education institutions in finland mm -hmm. and it's fun yeah you get to meet friends you get yeah. to talk to one another you get yeah. to do group work mm -hmm. and uh, the ecosystem the infrastructure set up mm -hmm. seems more like a playpen sometimes mm -hmm. than the traditional classroom yeah. like we have inherited from the anglo-saxon <laughs> british yeah. model because we were colonized by yeah. them yeah. so i want can can you enlighten us from that side because yes i know these two qualities plus the empowerment yeah. but still yeah they must be the way of the execution of the policy to make yeah. it so good yeah that's right and actually we we think that the joy of learning is such an important motivation issue and sometimes we get asked that does it mean that you're making your schools kind of amusement parks mm -hmm. We are not, <laughs> but we want to have kind of both issues that people and, and the pupils, they feel safe and enjoy their schools. And that also part of that enjoyment is reaching your own targets. That that still there's a kind of thing that there are requirements okay. in the school system. Mm -hmm. And we as humans, we are such that it's nice to accomplish something. So it's then the ability of the teacher to kind of set the target so that they can be met mm -hmm. on an individual level. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of, we are not kind of assessing children uh, kind of competing with each other, mm -hmm. but kind of seeing that what is the right achievement for each individual. Okay. And so that's a kind of a different approach. And, and that reaching the requirements and still enjoying the everyday work okay. and uh, what's happening in schools is combined in Finland. Okay. I have to go for the first break, but once we're back, Yes. How do I explain to the Malaysian people about the Finnish education system? So, Finnish children play more than they actually maybe study and in the purest form mm. that we understand it here. Mm -hmm. They talk to one another more than they keep to themselves and chat out what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Personalised interest and objective of the individual mm -hmm. student mm -hmm. is sacred. Mm -hmm. Also, not just the collective average of A's yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, playtime is of course sacred. But how do you move this forward when a country also looks at the school system, education system, to produce talents mm -hmm. for its competitiveness in the industry, in mm. the services sector mm. and all this. So, mm -hmm. how do you measure that? Because a lot of countries now worry that they're not producing enough talent. But here, the, in, in, in Finland, you let them discover first yeah. and then we tailor them to the needs of the industry later maybe yeah. let's talk about that after the short break Hi, thank you for still watching a very special recording of Agenda Wani. And education is an issue that all of us in this country will talk about and talk about and talk about. But I want to base the discussion after this only on the example of the Finnish education system. They're right up there in national ranking. They even are exporting the education in a sense. But uh, Mr. Ainonen, the Director General of the Finnish National Agency for Education, the former Minister of Education of Finland, here, if we do not see our children, on average, of course I'm stereotyping, doing any homeworks and we say, what? 
you learn in school today? Your teacher didn't go into your class, is it? You know, this kind of conversation is common. But uh, in Finland, yeah. it's a norm for the kids to have little or no homework. Yeah. You know, and the trust, philosophy, and equality mm -hmm. that you talk about, that is the trust of mm -hmm. the Finnish education sure. system. Yeah. I don't have to bog you with yeah. a lot of tasks for yeah. me to know that you are developing. Yeah. So I want to move on from there yeah. to a lot of pressure on the political side. Mm -hmm. Finland also have a Ministry for Education. Mm -hmm. You've been the minister. Mm -hmm. How would you, you know, give advice to your counterparts in this side of the mm -hmm. world? Because in our side of the world, mm -hmm. it is very, very political mm -hmm. in nature when we discuss education. In America, it's the same thing. And I've mm -hmm. seen analysis online where the Americans themselves are saying, hey, we're so political about our education system, we're not going anywhere much. The Finnish education system, they are not looking at it from the political contestation, mm. but all sides of the political spectrum will agree. Mm. It's about the professionalism yeah. of yeah. the education system. Yeah, that's quite right, actually. Already 20 years ago, when I was the minister, that was the situation, and it has continued, that actually all the political parties agree on the education policy. So there are, there are no kind of in, in principles, there are no kind of different opinions on it. And it very strongly kind of relies on what the research tells us about teaching and learning. So, so there's a very strong kind of evidence-based okay. background in the political decision-making. And another thing is that, uh, uh, cause the, the education policy must be such that it meets the everyday reality of a school. Mm -hmm. So when the education policy is planned, it's very important that there is a process that involves all the st uh, shareholders. So the teachers' unions, the research side, the, the parents' organizations, the municipalities' organizations. And there's a kind of a discussion for creating a shared vision. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, there's a very kind of consistent, long-term implementation process. So you don't change the policy every year, okay. but you kind of say that that's the direction we want to go to and then everybody in their capacity commits themselves to that direction. Sorry to interject, but I want to elucidate that thing you said just now. Everyone has a say in the formation of the education policy? Yeah, that's right. It's course. not just the ministry's job, I'm the ministry no. official, my team will assemble. Actually, I'm chairing right now a a work where we are looking at the future of our our kind of basic education okay. and around the table with me they are all the stakeholders are there and it's not the ministry it's not our agency who is saying that this is the direction we want to go mm -hmm. but we're discussing that what can we share what are the newest findings from the research that we should take into consideration the mm -hmm. The, the academic community is very strongly involved. Okay. Uh, and then we try to formalize that what are the most important directions that we want to go to. Can you share with us what's the latest trend and findings <laughs> from the Finnish education system? Yeah. Because it's the World Economic Forum that really sensationalized with, with uh, merits mm -hmm. about the fourth industrial revolution. Mm. So is that a factor? Mm. Or, or mm. are you already beyond that and we are all just laggards behind No, uh, I think one thing actually what World Economic Forum has also stressed is the importance of kind of early childhood education and there's so much more these days that we know that how important those years are for the abilities to learn in later stages so I would say that in Finland we will be stressing quite strongly 
on the actually the classes before the actual school starts mm -hmm. on the on the early childhood education. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that it seems to be the case that the community of of school mm -hmm. as a kind of learning community is becoming more and more important. Okay. That it's not only individual teachers, but it's a question that how the teachers work as a team okay. together to meet the targets. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's very amazing to sit beside amazing people with amazing stories to tell. You can compare yourself to the education system that we have here in the country. I have to go for the second break, but once we are back, early childhood is you know, a phrase I keep hearing from New York, the Academy of Science, for example, they have a research that monitors the cognitive ability and all other related abilities of children from the age of one until three. Mm -hmm. And their finding, for example, shows that if you're only exposed to, let's say, 75,000 words when you were growing until the age of one, yeah. so another child born at the same time in a different ecosystem exposed to maybe half a million words yeah. later on the yeah. competency and the abilities yeah. of both will be very very different exactly. so intervening at tertiary education yeah. from that point yeah. is pointless yeah. so we have to go back all the way i have to go for the a second and last break but once we are back how do you and how are you beefing up early childhood education mm -hmm. because you can't send one and two years old and three years old to school. Mm -hmm. You want them to be yeah. within the family institution. Yeah. Yeah. But you want them to start learning in that yeah. sense, being exposed to sound, sights, words and beyond. Yeah. Because we do know now, we research that that is the most crucial growing yeah. part. Yeah. So what do we do? How do we do it? The Finnish education uh, leadership will tell us about that after the short break. Never, never enough time with great people, great, uh, great subject matter to be discussed. I'm still here with Mr. Ainonen, the Director General, the former Minister of Education, now the Director DG of the Finnish National Agency for Education. The early childhood education system, mm -hmm. even at the World Economic Forum, there's a specific focus on this. Shakira, the big pop star, talks about childhood, mm -hmm. early childhood education also in, in Davos early this year. Mm -hmm. So, how is the Finnish way of looking at this now mm -hmm. and going to the future? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, our way of looking at it is that it's clear that we need to get a situation where the whole age group takes part in early childhood education before entering school. Uh, the, the kind of age group um, kind of presented today, it's not the whole age group and, and that's not a satisfactory situation. Okay. So, so we have actually a lot to do there. Mm -hmm. And also the kind of connection between the early childhood education institutions and the schools, there must be a very kind of tight connection there. Um, and, 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 and those are the things that, that we are working on. Of course, the families, the backgrounds, they have a strong effect that that's yeah. a fact mm -hmm. but we must do a better job with the schools to make sure that the kind of differentiation doesn't kind of grow too large between children how would the strategy be because let's say if it's a poor family mm. sending one child mm -hmm. then a very well to do family mm -hmm. has traveled overseas mm -hmm. and then the experience and the frame of reference and the vocab, for example, mm. number of words that we mentioned before, yeah. that would be huge in disparity. Yeah. Would going to school or preschool at the age of four, five and six and mm -hmm. later on, mm -hmm. how would the system look to level the playing field? Yeah, yeah. Well, well that's, the, that's the whole idea of the Finnish education system. That, that's what we are kind of trying to do. And, and also there's a system that we are, for example, using positive discrimination in financing the education system. That okay. if there are kind of areas with 
uh, kind of poor backgrounds or a lot of kind of immigrant people and all that, we are targeting more resources to those areas in order to make sure that there would be a, a kind of level okay. playing, playing field. Yeah. Okay. So many more things to ask. I only have a few minutes left. But um, first industrial revolution, I've spoken before. Mm -hmm. But uh, now is the world of applications, mobile applications. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Scandinavia used to be the famous mobile valley, mm -hmm. but then Apple came along, and you know that's a long story. But uh, do you see this a chance to get back to that high pinnacle? Because mm -hmm. the education system, like mm -hmm. in Finland, is already mm -hmm. solid. But how do you share that with the rest of the world when learning is now not just physical, but it's mm. digital, mm. it's online, mm. and it's lifelong. Mm. So the adaptation of the Finnish mm. education system now to the 4.0 of yeah. the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. Actually, we don't think that we have the secret recipe for learning. <laughs> uh, but what we have, we have a very kind of open mind to co-create the best possible global learning experience. And, and that's the reason why I'm here, because I want to share with other nations the best possible practices and kind of develop together the, the kind of future solutions. Um, and and you, you cannot kind of move an education system from one place to another. Yes but you can kind of think certain things and then kind of adapt them mm -hmm. to the local cultural and, sure. and, and other yes. kind of circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that we are on a learning path, mm -hmm. developing our own system and we want to do it together okay. with other nations. Can you elucidate a bit more about EduNation, the Finnish startup? Mm. And yeah, the Malaysian component. Yeah, that's actually part of the same idea. That that it's a question that how we could have more student exchanges between our nations, okay. and and of course, education is something that Finland is well known of, and we sure. would like to have more students also in Finland to get acquainted with it. What what is it in reality? Mm -hmm. And and I have a, a very kind of personal connection with that one. My oldest son is going to come to Asia to study for half a year and That's my great. daughter is in, in France okay. right now in Lyon studying. So uh, the, the, the kind of industrial revolution 4.1, it's a global phenomenon yes. and the working markets will be global. Mm -hmm. So why not give the students the abilities to study in that scene? 150,000 Finnish students to be abroad under that particular initiative by 2020. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, huge move. Mm. You have to have kind of bold targets to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't think that when Finland became independent 100 years ago, nobody would have said that we could be a kind of an education issues uh, world mm -hmm. leader. Yeah. But there were bold people on the, on the mm -hmm. road Mm -hmm. and made it happen and okay. I think this is the same thing. Okay, cool. <sighs> I have to give a sigh because that's all the time I have. But um, I was just going to say that before this, looking at many great attributes of the Finnish education system, um, you know, as a talk show anchor, I have to give one devil advocate's view. And before that was, yeah, but they're mainly a homogeneous society. More and more, the world is global. Yeah. Now, when I saw the together inspired mm. policy of sending yeah. hundreds of thousands of students overseas, so you're even factoring that to mm. what you do not have domestically. So I'm looking forward for a very great relationship between Malaysia yes, and thank Finland, you. especially in education. Of course, you are always welcome to come back live to our studio so that you can talk direct to the audience in Malaysia. Thanks to you. Thanks to the Finnish uh, embassy here. Thanks to you for watching and sending your own views uh, to the matter. I know education is a very, very hot topic right here in Indonesia. So we have all the social media platforms. Download our Android and you know, 
uh, Apple iOS applications and you can watch and give your critic live on your favorite mobile gadget. Good night and goodbye. Thank you so much once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.